You're listening to Procurement 6, the weekly podcast from the team at Art of Procurement that summarizes this week in procurement in just six short segments. Hi there, I'm Helen McKenzie and today is Friday, February 3rd, 2023. Six. Should we wait until times are good to implement change or are the tough times a better place to start? Now, that's a really interesting question and one we'll be covering at Digital Outcomes this year. I'm looking forward to hosting a session with Lee Lutam from Opstream where we'll be considering the importance of automating procurement in times like these. The evidence suggests that recession or inflation could be just the triggers we need to get things moving. So my tip for you this week is, if things are tough for you, think about what you could do now to move things forward. That could be the first step on the path to success. Five. This week, the podcast featured Catherine McCleary. Now, Catherine's a long-time friend of Art of Procurement and a marketing expert with significant experience working with procurement services and SaaS companies. Catherine joined Philip Eidson to discuss the topic of procurement's brand. Do we need a bit of branding in procurement? Increasingly, the answer is yes. The section I've chosen for you today is where Phil and Catherine consider scaling the brand and why that's important. Because as we think about scaling um, brand across a procurement organization, across everybody who works within that organization, how important is consistency across team members in how they interact with stakeholders? Um, and how? what are some of the things that you can do to help drive consistency in those messages, whether it's messaging, whether it's the look and the feel, whether it's the approach, you know, everything that goes into creating an experience. Wow. You're, you're really, you're really pinpointing um, what I've been working on in the last couple of weeks is the scalability of a brand. I, I think where I am reminded of how brand is often forgotten is is the system behind it Mm -hmm. and brand isn't hardly worth anything if it's not going to be consistent. So it's, it's gotta be a team effort. Everybody has to be rowing in the same direction. If you have a a mission statement for procurement that gets, you know, misconstrued or is, is not the same when you speak to three different people in the, in, in the department and everybody's, you know, working on their stakeholders and, and the communication um, gets received differently, or maybe somebody isn't into it or, or whatever, whatever it happens to be, then you're, you're kind of back at square one. And then your perception is, is going to suffer because not everybody's on the same page. So figuring out a shared narrative and creating formal documents and creating mm-hmm. what we like to call a style guide and making sure that everyone knows where to find it, how to use it, and take take the time to train your team on how to speak about procurement, how like the words that you use, part of part of one of my favorite exercises is understanding the language of a rebrand. We say this, we don't say that we say partner. We don't say vendor. I know that's one of your, your brand rules. Right. Um, No, I think the reason why I, I talked about scalability and consistency is because another challenge that I see that we have, and I saw this as a practitioner was that, you know, your interactions with, if you're not thinking about scalability, and this comes whether it's brand, the, the brand of procurement, whether it's talent management, whether it's um, process, everything that we do, you are only you, you run this risk of having some superstars within the organization who have the ability to do this themselves. And so because they have the ability to do that themselves, they've built a really good perception, not a perception, they've built a really good relationship with procurement and they're driving a positive perception of procurement. But then that falls down when, because it's very inconsistent, it's it's totally built on an individual and an individual's abilities. That person leaves, right. um, then you're back to square one. Or if you're not applying the same rigor over in one place because you've got somebody who's really strong and somewhere else where you maybe have someone that's a little bit more junior that's not got that capability, then you're not really driving brand because you know you need to be doing the same thing in every place that you do it, in every interaction that every stakeholder has with you. 
Right. So to make any brand scalable, you have to create resources and you have to embed those resources at the ground level. And it has to be incorporated into anybody's onboarding for the business. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted a new hire in the last company I worked for, if I wanted them to understand what brand is used for, I had to make sure that I showed up, first of all, to that, you know, that welcome meeting uh, that they have in their first week. And I had to make sure that they had the right materials. And um, we also had to make sure that we were represented in company meetings and that we were explaining this is the impact that our marketing team is having, you know, as did other departments. So you have to take the time to create the resources and it could be training videos. It could just be a Slack message once mm -hmm. a week, you know, in the general channel, this is what we're doing and this is why it matters and using your, your verbiage and repeating your values and tying that to the same values that the company is you know, the company uses and their mission. And, you know, so, so making sure that you're visible is a great way to ensure that your brand lives on beyond your time on yeah. that team. Everybody has to be rowing in the same direction. Sounds like a great way to set things up for success. Four. Sometimes that to-do list is a bit overwhelming, isn't it? There's so much to do. Where will I start? It can be hard to see the big picture sometimes, particularly when there's a lot on the agenda. So I loved Daniel Opong's advice on the Sourcing Hero podcast this week. Just because you can't do everything doesn't mean you can't do anything. So where will you take action today? To hear more of Daniel's thoughts, check out the full episode of the podcast. There's a link in the show notes. This is Procurement 6 from Art of Procurement. To get notified every time an episode is published, go to artofprocurement.com slash subscribe. Three. Someone this week shared on LinkedIn that they were bored of posts about procurement, saving the world from a sustainability perspective. He wondered where the real examples were of where we have made a difference and urged us to stop talking and start acting. Well, the good news is there are lots of examples of procurement taking action which are being posted today. And I wanted to share one example from the Whistle procurement team led by a great CPO in my network, Gareth Hughes. Now, Whistle is an end-to-end e-commerce logistics and high quality delivery management service based in the UK. And at the end of 2022, Whistle changed to a new uniform supplier, Workwear Express, which added recycled and sustainable fabric options to their uniform portfolio. They also updated their ordering methods to allow on-demand requests and therefore reduce waste and they implemented a recycling process for old uniforms to recycle, repurpose garments and save them from ending up in landfill. Now, if that's not the power of procurement in action, I don't know what is. Two. Staying with sustainability, I saw some really encouraging news this week about the tipping point. No, it's not the stories about how we're nearing the point of no return for climate, it's the reverse. Academics from the University of Exeter here in the UK have done some research that claimed we might be starting to see a positive tipping point, which could be the start of what's described in the article on Positive News this week as an unstoppable wave of decarbonisation. From EVs to green fertiliser, things are picking up the pace of change. And the great news is, Procurement is well-placed to help amplify the impact. One. It's a fantastic February here at Art of Procurement with a fabulous lineup of events for you to attend. On February 7th, we're partnering with Vendor to consider how we can stop shadow spend in its tracks with improved data visibility. And we'll be thinking about business resilience for short-term agility and long-term growth with KPMG and Cooper at the end of the month on February the 28th. And sandwiched in between on February 15th and 16th, there's 
digital outcomes, of course. So make sure you register now by using the link in the show notes or going to artofprocurement.com forward slash calendar. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next Friday at 6 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time. If you've enjoyed this pod, help us grow and tell your peers to search for Procurement 6 wherever they get their podcasts.